Hey there, thanks for tuning in to our weekly fly tying series. I'm Steve Worley, owner of the Worley Bugger Fly Company, and this week I'm going to show you how to tie the craft fur minnow. So we do lots and lots of uh, bass fishing here in uh, central Washington, and uh, we're always coming up with innovative new patterns. This is a uh, fly that is basically based on Bob Clouser's famous Clouser minnow. Uh, the only uh, real difference is, is it's tied with uh, synthetic craft fur instead of uh, bucktail. So you get a lot more swimming action. Still get that, uh, that great minnow look, silhouette. Uh, you know, that smallmouth and largemouth bass love when they're uh, hunting forage fish. But this fly really breathes well and uh, really imitates a swimming minnow in the water. You could tie it in a variety of different colors uh, for whatever type of water conditions you're, you're fishing uh, or, or uh, to match any type of minnow pattern that you like. So uh, stay tuned, I'm going to show you how to tie the craft for a minnow. Mm. Alright, so let's get started here. Um, first thing that you're going to do is select an appropriate hook for this fly and in the vise I am putting in a partridge universal predator hook. This is a uh, size 2. It's a straight shank, straight eye, wide gap band, super sharp point. Uh, great predator style hook for predator style fish. So the first thing we're going to do is start our thread base behind our eye and in my bobbin I'm using 100 denier gel spun GSP thread. Super strong, super difficult to break and uh, great for building large size flies. It's nearly impossible to break it. Uh, it's super thin. You can pull super tight, bind the material down really well. And you got to make sure that you lay down a good thread base with it. So work the thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. And the first material we're going to go ahead and tie in is uh, just some flat pearl braid. You can use any color of braid that you want to. This is just going to cover the, the shank of the, of the hook. And uh, you can uh, dictate the body color dependent on the color of the craft fur minnow that you're going to be tying. So get that tied in, work your thread back up to the front, and then we're just gonna we're just gonna lay this down across the shank and then bind it down nice and tight and then uh, just trim it off. So this body will kind of flash and you'll be able to see it as you're moving this fly through the water. Kind of translucent between the craft fur. Just kind of another trigger mechanism for big predator fish. So just tie that off right there. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this hook around in our vise. Cause we want that hook to ride up. Sometimes you can build them too with the with the hook riding down. And we're gonna select a, a lead eye or a brass eye. I like the lead eye because it's a little bit heavier, fishes a little bit deeper. But if you want it to fish shallower, then select a brass eye for it. And again, any color that you want, they come in you know, a wide variety of different colors. and sizes. This is a medium lead eye, so heavy. So we're just going to figure eight this. Okay. 
Okay, so after we figure eight this, these lead eyes in place, you could take and glue them. I like to use uh, solar res UV glue. You can use super glue too if, if you like that. I just, I prefer the UV res and it's just, it's not as messy to work with and it's quick drying. So just apply a thin layer on there and then just blast it with your UV light. It just kind of speeds up the process. That'll, kind of, that'll help bind our eyes down and keep them from moving around a lot. Okay, so once you get that in place, select your uh, craft fur. Uh, you can tie this in a wide variety of different colors. Today I'm gonna tie a, a green and white one. That's one of my more popular favorite colors that I like to use, uh, especially for bass. Uh, Craft fur comes in probably 30 different colors, so you can you can tie it in whatever color you like, um, and and whatever color combinations you like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of comb this craft fur out. It's a synthetic material, so it has it has a lot of different strands in it, you know that that make it move really, really well in the water, but it also, you know, has varying lengths to it. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, a patch of uh, elk or deer hair. You want to get in when you cut this, get in right next to the, to the hide. Make it, making it as long as, getting the longest fibers possible. And again, too, it has, you know, like, you know, natural hair, it has a lot of under fur in it. So you want to take a good brush. And this is a little hairline brush that they offer. It does a great job of pulling out all the under fur, getting that out. You don't want that in your fly. So get, get that out of there. And then trim your ends straight. And we're going to flip this around and we're going to tie it in. The tips facing back. So just behind, uh, just behind your lead eyes, you want to take and bind down this first layer of craft fur. Nice and pull nice and tight on there and get it bound down. Okay, and then once that's in place, you can pull it up, kind of pull it through that hook and then bind it down to the shank. And then I'll just half hitch it. Pull it tight. So then we're going to grab our other color, which is white, and we're going to do the same operation. Clean our brush out here. Comb your craft fur. Get those nice long strands of it. Really help make a really, really good minnow pattern. And then again, just get in there as tight as you can next to that hide. And again, you get all that. Just comb that out to get that under fur out of there. It'll help pull it out, pull all those little kind of small strands out of there too. You never get them all, so you don't have to worry about it. Once the fly gets wet, it, it all comes together anyways. So again, just cut the ends. So you can kind of see this gap that we've left in back behind the eyeballs there. So we left that there for a purpose because we want this 
piece of craft for to suck right into that. So again, we're gonna tie it in backwards, right behind the eye. You can kind of see as you start to really pull down on that, that crafter will suck in right back behind that, that lead eye. See how it pulls down when you pull it back. And then instead of binding this one down, like we did with our first, we're just gonna work it, work our thread right back behind it. And that's gonna help pull it all down. So we want this kind of free floating and have lots of movement to it in the water. That's kind of the magic of the uh, craft fur minnow. You'll get all these kind of funky little pieces of fiber that are that are sticking up and again you don't have to worry so much about it when the fly gets wet it's all going to bind together just you, you can get anything out of there that might be hindering your tying so once that's tied down nice and tight we're going to add a couple of pieces maybe three or four pieces of lateral scale on the side. And this is a real thin lateral scale, micro. This is gonna, again, this is gonna add some flash and it's gonna add more movement to this fly. So you're gonna wanna take it and kind of double it up, get it even and put it right on the back side of your thread there and then get them all together. This is gonna help lock it in place. So you wanna put that right in there behind that, behind that eye. Get that right in place and then just pull down tight. And again, that'll suck up right in behind that eye. You'll feel it when you, when you pull on that thread, it'll suck it right in there. Make a few wraps, that'll lock it into place. And we're going to do the same exact technique on the other side. Bind it in, pull in tight behind that eye, pulls it right in. And then you want these strands, you want these strands to be about as long as your craft fur too, so then you can just chop off the excess out of there. And then to the next material, we're gonna add a little throat and a little trigger point to this fly. We're gonna use this laser dub you don't need very much of this, just small, small amount. So just take a little pinch of this dubbing. You wanna just kinda, of, just twist it a little bit together. And again, same technique on the back side of your thread. And then form it together. And again, you want it to go right back behind that eye so it acts as a throat and a trigger fish will see that red point as the minnow is swimming just kind of more of an attack trigger mechanism and adds a little bit of uh, variation color to the fly so that's kind of the one thing you're always looking for when you're building predator style flies is little trigger mechanisms that are going to make fish react. So again, we're gonna do the same technique again on the other side of the fly, right behind the eye. Pull down tight, pull that thread right in. That'll bind everything nice and tight in there. 
got it in place. And we'll just figure eight a little bit and then build up a little bit of thread base here behind the eye. And you can either whip finish or half hitch, whichever you like. Cut your thread off. And then again, we're just going to uh, kind of seal this fly up with UV resin or super glue. It'll just help seal it, build a little bit more durable fly. Predator fish, you know, are a little bit tougher on flies than what, uh, you know, smaller fish can be. So just burn that with your light. Till it's dry and then for a final we're just going to kind of take and kind of comb the sides out that'll really help with that throat too give it kind of a mixture of color watch that hook sticking up because they're super sharp There you go. Mm, that is the craft fur minnow. Great fly for predator style fish like bass, tied in a wide variety of colors and sizes. Thanks for viewing and sharing. Have a great day. Mm.